What's up, guys? John here from Big Pants Underground. Today, I'm going to get a little angry. <laughs> We're not talking about movies again. We're going to talk about something else. Something I saw on Twitter. Something that has completely upset me. So let's take a look. From the New York Post, land of the free lunch. Today's cover, Migrant Costs... Migrant crisis costs $150 billion in 2023, with crisis zones having to cut police, fire, and services to cut costs. Well, maybe now I know why I lost my health insurance. Uh, in case you missed it, I am a cancer survivor. That cancer kind of messed my body up a bit, and I have trouble... Uh, with you know, holding a normal job, normal tasks are, are a little bit more difficult for me. Uh, and I was, I had my health insurance that was covering all of my medication and my tests. And for some reason, a few months ago, I lost it with no explanation whatsoever. And now I might have an explanation because we find out that our government has thrown $150 billion in one year to, to pay for these people to be here, to give them money, to give them housing, to give them food, to give them medical care. They're not even American citizens. They don't even, most of them, speak our language. But, hey, they went ahead and uh, <laughs> gave them all the money and took it away from Americans. Let's look at the at the uh, at the article here. 150 billion. Uh, there's no reason to read all this, but you can see here there's a graph. Uh, these are the 10 state and local offices which received the most funds from the FEMA Shelter and Services Grant. So that's the grant that helped to pay to shelter and give these migrants food and health care. So you can see that New York City got the most, $81 million, and then El Paso, and then uh, Arizona, Massachusetts, Chicago, Denver, Los Angeles, blah, 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 blah. So $81 million, and then the city of Philadelphia got $11 million. Now we look at this next graph. Uh, and these are the... Uh, NGOs, which are like Catholic charities and stuff like that. So they got 41 million, 28 million, 8 million. And this is all, this is all for migrants. This is not for Americans. This is all for migrants. Okay. Non-citizens, people that have come here illegally, and we have given them all the money. <laughs> it's left huge holes in city budgets meaning cutbacks for regular U.S. citizens, including Denver City Council has to cut $45 million from its budget, including $8.4 million from its police department, $2.5 million from the, from the fire department. So that's Denver. And then New York City, $2.3 billion in costs for housing migrants alone in 23 and 2024, resulting in city agencies cutting costs by 5%. South Portland, Maine, Property taxes have increased to pay for the migrant crisis. The mayor has advised elderly residents to remortgage their houses to pay them. So they're, they're advising old people, elderly people that are probably on a fixed income that in order to pay their property taxes so that they'll have money to pay for the migrants, remortgage your house. Put yourself in more financial burden more financial danger so that we can pay for these illegal people in our country. Chicago faces a $1 billion budget gap, partly over migrant services, which is now scrambling to make up. Okay, this, this is it. This is on paper. This is proof, 100% proof right here that the government spent all the money that they should be using to help Americans that are in a, that are having a hard time right now because the prices of everything has skyrocketed. We're losing our insurance. We're losing uh, just basic things that 
is our right as a citizen of this country. We're losing all that so that they can house these illegal people. And who was in charge of the border? Who was the border czar? Kamala Harris. That's right. Kamala Harris. She was the border czar. She was the one that was supposed to be responsible after Donald Trump left office to secure the border and keep our country safe from these people. And what did she do instead? She opened the border, let these people in, and the Democratic government created programs to give them all the money that should have been here to help American people. That's right. It's just, there's some pictures. There they are. Look, Texas National Guard's troops push back migrants trying to cross into El Paso. They're ready. They're they're packed. They're all packed up and ready to cross, man. I'm sorry. I know your country sucks. (laughs) It does, but that's where you were born. This is not your country. Your country sucks. Go back. I'm sorry. We can't. We can't. We can't support this anymore. Migrants carry their belongings in Denver, where the city has seen an influx of more than 42,000 since 2022. That was two years ago. Two years ago, 42,000 migrants have moved in. And then here, migrants gather at an undisclosed shelter in Denver. Doesn't look like a shelter to me. It looks like apartments. Looks like pretty nice apartments. Looks like nicer apartments than I've seen people around me living in. So there you go. There's where all our money went. There's where, that's why FEMA can't help out Florida. FEMA can't help out North Carolina. FEMA can't help out Georgia. All the people that were devastated by Milton and Helene, they can't give them money. They don't have, their, these people are dying. Their houses are wrecked. They have uh, uh, no food, no power in, in some cases. And they're stuck. They're stuck in the mountains. And the government won't even let uh, civilians go in to help them. But the government's not going in to help them because they don't have any money to do it. And now we know why. Early voting in my state starts tomorrow. I don't know when it starts in other places, but it starts for me tomorrow. And I am going to go and cast my vote. I think that if we get the early voting done, I think if we get in there and we do the early voting and you don't wait until actual election day, that they won't be able to screw with those ballots. Hopefully, hopefully they shouldn't be able to screw with them anyway but they won't be able to screw with those ballots. So vote early if you can. Uh, And if not on election day, make sure you vote. We have got to end this guys. We've got to end it. We, We got to get these people out. Everybody is saying it. Okay. It's not just our country. It's other countries, uh, 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 Germany, uh, United Kingdom, uh, Italy and the governments, which are, you know, kind of just like the liberal governments government that we have right now here in our country are putting their own citizens in prison for speaking out against this, speaking out against the the migrants and they're letting the migrants take over. They're letting them run, run through the streets. They're letting them beat the crap out of their own citizenry, uh, putting people in the hospital, robbing from them. They're gangs of, uh, of, uh, in Times Square, New York, you go to Times Square, New York right now, there are gangs, literally gangs of teenagers that will, that they'll uh, corner you in an alley or, or on the street, like, uh, like 20 of them. There's nothing you can do. Like 20 of them will corner you and steal everything that you have. And then uh, those children go back to a, 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 a certain place or a certain person, like a fence and give them uh, the the stuff that they stole, and they get a small stipend for it. So we've got these roaming gangs of migrants, illegals, that are actually hiring kids to go out and do this. This is happening in New York City. So uh, now there's only one thing we can do. You got to vote. You got to vote to end this. I'm not telling you who to vote for, but you got this has to stop. This has to stop if we're going to get our country back. 
Thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, talk to you next time. Bye for now.